Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we are live. <laughs> um, sorry, we've just been being naughty behind the scenes. Like, right? <laughs> 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 out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Sunday morning, so we're all struggling. We haven't had enough coffee yet, I don't think. <laughs> but good morning to anybody and any, everybody that's watching. Uh, welcome to the Waffling Witches. If you look, see, Sue knows the form. Look, I do. I Sue. Hello in the comments so that we can say hello back and that we know you're there and that we're, you know, know that we're not talking to ourselves. If you haven't given uh, StreamYard permission to use your name, you will come up on their comments as Facebook user. So we might not know who you are. I'm just signing in to my phone so that I can see your names. Oh, wow. Morning. Jackie said it's 5 a.m. there. Oh, Jackie. Well done, Jackie. Wow. Yeah, Jackie, you get, you're mad, basically. Yeah, there's a lot of Facebook users. Hello to all of them. Hello, Lani. Hello, Lani. Hello, Hi, Lani. Lani. Right, let's, uh, let's get some of these up so that I can see the name. That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Propped you up on someone. So we've got Luna, Sarah, Lisa, Helen, Sue, and Penelope. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you all. There is a little bit when you uh, above the video that where StreamYard says to uh, just give them permission to use your name. If you click on that, we will be able to see who you are um, on air screens. But we'll have a look at the. Uh, and Paul's here as well. Hi, Paul. Oh, hello. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Uh, and Andrea. Hello, Andrea. And Claire. Claire. Hello, hello yeah. everybody. Maria. Maria. Lots of fabulous people. Thank you so much for joining us. We will attempt to make it worth your while. <laughs> we have a theme today of magical herbs. You can blame Ness. That was it. Was her suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as always if you've got any questions about magical herbs or about witchcraft in general or about any of us um between us we cover quite a lot of witchcraft ground we all ha have our own unique abilities uh, <laughs> so, some more than others <laughs> <laughs> I meant myself, not you guys. You guys are fantastic. <laughs> uh, so if you've got any questions, do pop them in the comments and we will do uh, attempt to answer them for you. I'm not being rude looking at my feet. I'm looking at my phone so I can see your names. Hello, Cheryl. Uh, Jackie, what's on your T-shirt? <laughs> okay, my T-shirt says, Liebkunche, Liebkunche. Oh, now you Jack can't say it. Basically, gingerbread besson. So if anybody's seen the TV series Grimm, yeah. these are gingerbread characters. So we have the Reaper, we have Grimm, we have uh, Reaper, we have Hex and Beast, Bower really? all in gingerbread <laughs> format. So not Karma you, Sutra gingerbread then. <laughs> if you haven't seen Grimm, watch it. It is in my top three TV series. Yeah, it is good. Mm. I've never seen that. Oh, gingerbread, I have no idea, but I liked the t-shirt. <laughs> a gingerbread man with a axe is quite impressive. Or oh, a reaper, gingerbread man. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> that's it. Delani, Grim is the best. Yeah, it is. Uh, Maria's waiting for her DVDs. Cool. It is an excellent program. Um, Jackie, yeah, definitely, Jackie, check it out. It is excellent. Yeah. Um, based on the grim fairy stories, but in real life. Very, very clever idea. Um, so, and Gypsy, of course, has got Kitchen Witch on her boobs, because you do. On her boobs. You will be hooked. Maria says you'll be hooked you will <laughs> once you watch it. Um, but yes, Magical Herbs today. Uh, and any other subject that we veer off to. And here goes the dog, because the front door's just open. <laughs> <laughs> the da Daxon that thinks it's a Rottweiler. But anyway, ask any questions you can or want to in the comments, and we'll do our very best to answer them about anything witchcraft in general. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, and we will do our best. Um, 
I think that's caught up with everybody. Yep. We're going to, uh, what I actually did was ask these lovely ladies to pick a herb to talk to you about, just to give a general mm -hmm. overview of what it does and what they use it for. Um, and we will also cover any herb questions you have. Good morning, Jess. Uh, what I'll do first, I'm sure you're all familiar with working with magical herbs. I think it is probably one of the areas, good morning, Irene. It is probably one of the areas where most witches work with, I, I would say, magical mm. herbs in some mm. form or another. Uh, and when we say magical herbs, we're actually covering the whole plant world, really. Flowers, trees, plants, herbs, uh, even food ingredients. Um, it's quite a huge subject to cover. Spices as well, anything from your kitchen cupboards, pretty much, or your garden or wild plants. It is huge. Um, here we go. There's a question. For you. Do you forage and collect herbs before you have a firm purpose for them on occasion? Oh, yes. <laughs> if yeah. I see something like that, oh, that would be useful. Yep. Yeah. I'll try it, pack it away. You'll probably mm. find that wherever we're out, we come home with some old weed in our pocket. <laughs> <laughs> or several. Uh, yes. Um. Uh, if I start with, good morning, Jackie, as well. If I start with the whole general idea, we work with magical energy of all plants. Uh, trees, herbs, plants of all sorts. Every single one of them has a magical energy and you can, um, sorry, I'm just, <laughs> we've had, a, I've just had a message from Duncan. I'm going to totally embarrass him now. He'd like to join the group so he can watch the Waffling Witches. <laughs> let me in, let me in. <laughs> let's do that. And let's do that. Right. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> herbs have magic, or plants will have a magical energy. Uh, every single one of them. And you will find um, they're all unique. Every single plant has a unique and individual energy and character. Um, so I can see the comments, but can't see you. This is Facebook messing about, isn't it? <laughs> Probably. Um, I'm just going to invite, if you can see the comments, but you can't see us and you can hear us, refresh your page. That might, uh, that might help. Sorry, technical issues here. Right, let's go. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, people are just saying, come on. Good morning, Pete. It's <laughs> been teenagers to work. <laughs> so, energy for plants. Everyone has, each one has a unique and individual energy. And whilst mm. they all have their own magical properties, so mint as a whole, I like to work with for prosperity. But you will also mm. find that each individual plant has a slightly different energy to each other as well they're like people really aren't they they have their own characters they have their own personalities in just like you do with people and i also think the same with crystals but i also think that some of them you'll get on with and some of them you won't again like people isn't it you do find you connect with some more than others um it is about connecting with that energy to find out what that plant can do for you and we're going to cover some of the, the more common ones today, but work with your own intuition because what works for some won't work for others. And just because I work with cinnamon for success doesn't mean that it will work for someone else for that intent. So you really do have to trust your intuition on this one and make a connection with the plants. I tend to use mine, you can see some of them in the jars behind there, for magical um, but I know all the other lovely ladies here do make cordials and tinctures and balms and all wonderful lotions and potions on a regular basis. So the magical plants do have a huge amount of uses. Um, and don't be limited either. The dandelion that's growing in the crack in the pavement is just as useful as an exotic plant growing in a garden. Uh, don't rule any of the plants out at all because every single one, even a blade of grass has magical property mm. uh, and they are all equally as useful. 
One thing I would say, we tend to use things, I think we all do this, we use what's local to us. We use what's grown in our gardens, we use what we find when we're out and about, we use what we find in our kitchen cupboards. I won't spend lots of money to buy a really fancy exotic ingredient from the other side of the globe, mainly because I don't want to spend the money. <laughs> I'd rather spend the money on pretty things. <laughs> um, but I also don't want to have that eco damage because if you're flying it across from the other side of the globe, you've got that damage to the ecosystem. And I also think something that is grown in your own country, in your own locality, in your own garden, is going to have a more personal and powerful energy than something from a country that you've never been to. So bear that in mind when you're doing your workings. I think we all kind of generally follow that rule of thumb, don't we? Uh, Sue says, I hate picking any kind of plant, so I tend to use dry that being picked for me. That's the other side of it. I tend to use leaves and seeds and things that have fallen from trees and plants. Herbs benefit from being picked. If you don't pick herbs, they will grow leggy. If you keep picking herbs, they will keep providing for you. So in some cases, plants do benefit. And if you grow flowers in your garden, they all benefit from being deadheaded. So deadhead them all and save all the flowers. Uh, I do tend to leave a lot of the flowers that seed for the birds, particularly things like sunflowers. Um, but if you do desperately need something, ask the plant, ask permission from it if you can take a leaf or you know, berries or whatever. So it's a bit of a depending on what the plant is kind of situation. Um, dandelions used to be grown specifically in gardens because it's such a useful plant. Yeah, and I think we do discard them now, don't we, as a weed? Um, they are also one of the first plants out in the year for the bees, so do leave them doing what they're doing. Uh, Maria's got loads of sage, brilliant, very, very useful um, herb of sage. Um, mugwort, that's an interesting one because mugwort does grow very well in this country. Sue, you grow a lot. Yeah, I, do. I think Heather does as well because I gave you a cutting, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, oh, Lovely. yes, please. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> uh, I noticed the mugwort and horse nettle growing along the sidewalks and the and the city came with a weed whacker before they could oh before they could rake everything up throw it out yeah <laughs> ran out and grabbed a bunch of them yeah i cows yeah. do tend to don't they they tend to cut all of the hedgerows and the, the side of the banks that's paul over in japan okay mugwort in japan excellent i didn't know it grew over there uh yeah you've got to you've got to be quick when the councils and local authorities are doing their weeding yeah they started yeah. cutting back around here and I've just started foraging my rose hips thankfully I've got all my rose hips before they hacked away the bush <laughs> yeah um, you've just got to get in there quick you? they yeah. do hack don't they it's not trimmed it's just yeah. all yeah. hacked yeah. away yeah. isn't it it's, it's quite horrible really isn't it um, uh, oh, sorry, this is one from Helen no wrong one sorry that's Karen dandelions are your favourite flower um, they are fantastic mm -hmm. Very useful. This one's from Helen. Uh, where do you put your plants to dry them? Do you hang them or lay them out? I tend to lay mine out in the conservatory or the greenhouse, um, but I've got space to do that. So um, I don't know what you guys do. I put mine in a, in, on a tray in the airing cupboard, but I know not everyone's got an air. No. Yeah, I do the same too. Things to fly to lie flat, and I use the garage to hang. I've got mugwort and yarrow hanging in the garage at the moment. I use the washing line. Oh, okay. Sunny day, I hang them on the washing line with a peg. When it's winter, and um, I can't hang them on the washing line, I put them underneath the radiators. You know, the pipe that runs along the floor under the radiator, and they dry out mm. really quickly there. Excellent. Yeah, radiators is a good one. I know I've got an airing cupboard, but sometimes I put small amounts, wrap them in kitchen paper and put them along the top of the radiator. And then that yeah, the same sort of thing, obviously got to keep it out of the way of Denver, but it's yeah, brilliant. They dry really quickly, don't they, on the radiator? They do. Mm. Yeah, don't leave them where cats and dogs can get them. <laughs> no, yeah, I have to move 
I think nice I get what I got. <laughs> I'll go and get a towel out the airing cupboard and then get all these bags of herbs falling on my head. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be somewhere dry because you don't want them going mouldy and you have to make sure that they're really dry before you put them in your storage mm -hmm. jars. Um, but yeah, hang them up, tie them and hang them up or lay them flat on trays on kitchen paper. If they've got seed heads, it's quite useful to hang them up and then put a brown paper bag around the actual seed head part so that it catches all the seeds. Otherwise, you're going to get showered in seeds every time. You walk up. <laughs> but as long as it's somewhere dry, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. Um, uh, good question, though. Good question. I am struggling with technology today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I was gifted with a set of herbs, but there were two I hadn't heard of, Neem and Tree of Life. Oh, I love Neem. Neem yeah, is really good. You'd for, done a blog um, on it, didn't you? Yeah, it's really good for strep throat and bad throats. It literally cures a strep throat in three days. It's amazing. Um, you can buy the leaves uh, quite easily on the internet. Um, yeah, very, very beneficial to have in your winter medicine box, I would say. You did write a blog post on it, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, I will find it and share it after we've done. Yeah, if, if you go to the Kitchen Witch blog, there is a uh, blog post on the Tree of Life. I'm not sure. So I've not heard of that. That would be. Um, let's do a quick... Uh, Ah, moringa. 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 Really it's really good for your skin. Um, you can get a really good body wash with moringa and body cream. It's very, very soothing. I have seen it on beauty products and things. Yeah, the body shop do a moringa uh, body so cream. M-O-R-I-N-G-A. Like M -O -R -I -N -G -A. So give that one a look up. Mm. Um, Quite interesting. I have a huge mm -hmm. jasmine bush, but never know what I can do with it. Can I dry it? Yeah, the flowers. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Everyone's going, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm they look like they're rare, those nodding dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jasmine's really useful for all sorts it's of things. It's sacred to the goddess, isn't it? To, um, yeah. And the moon. But yeah, tea, you can make tea from the flowers. You can yes. you can steep them in oil. You can use them on your face. It's It's brilliant. Amazing wash for your bedroom walls, a lust wash with jasmine flowers. It is mm. dreams, money, love, meditation and lust, ruled by the moon and Venus. And it is very feminine, isn't it? Very feminine energy and the element of water. So, yes, uh, generally the flowers, isn't it, that you dry yeah. from jasmine? Yeah. Uh, and they dry really there. well. Yeah, I dry the leaves as well. Um, yeah, the flowers is what you generally find, isn't it, in mixes? So, yes, dry it and lots of uses for it. Uh, Maria, they spray, which is also bad. Yeah, the councils yeah. do, don't they? They spray um, for what they consider weeds. Uh, Lani uses the dandelion leaves and the petals using of all the plant. Yeah, you can use everything on the dandelion pretty much, can't you? Because you can use the root as well, can't you? Uh, yeah, lots of people hanging them, hanging them in the kitchen, hanging them upside down. Uh, oh, this is one that, uh, there we go. Is it right that rose hips should have a frost on them before picking? This covers slows as well, doesn't it? We were talking about slows last week. Mm, yeah. Um, do you guys leave them before the frost? No, I was always told that you pick them before the frost, otherwise they sometimes they can get damaged in the frost. So I always make sure that I pick my rose hips before the end of September. Yeah, yeah. And if you wait, you know, if you wait for a frost, you might not, you might be waiting a while. I mean, someone yeah. said about the slows last year, and we didn't really get one. And if I'd waited to then, all the slows would have gone. So, yeah, if they're ripe, I, I, I tend to just go and, like, say, just go and pick them. So, yeah, no, um, I, I think we would, we would personally dismiss that one. Okay, so. Pick them as soon as they're ready. There's loads of slows out there at the minute, actually, that I'm going to get today. Mm. Uh, 
Right, let's have a look. One from Jess. Lots of questions today. So I've dried a load of red <coughs> that I've grown, but unsure whether to just take off the leaves or do you chop up the whole stalk to go into jars? Don't chop it up. The stalk <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Just put them in a big jar. Just keep yeah. them home. Yeah. Keep them as well. Yeah. <laughs> Keep them as long as you can because the stems are really good. <laughs> raspberry jam. That's not it was raspberry, raspberry jam. jam. It's now very, 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 I had a fire. <laughs> and um, I tend to use my leftover rosemary, rosemary branches as um, kindling in the fire. Yeah. Whatever's yeah. left, I then put up and put in jars. But yeah, definitely oh, yeah. Like branches. Keep them as big as you can because the stalks also smell just as much as the leaves, but they yep. burn longer. So particularly in for fire kindling or in incense blends, the stalks actually are worthwhile because they keep it going longer. Yes. Um, I've got a bit of both. I have got some stalks with, you know, like whole branches of it, but I've also got a little bit that's just the leaves chopped up when I need a powdery. Um, but yes, save it all. Save it all. Save everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I used to, I do what my mother used to hang them upside down with a paper bag over their heads yeah it catches all the seeds I think that's the point of the brown paper bags and also will stop them from fading in in the light um, Jackie doesn't have an airing cupboard no I don't they don't they don't seem to be so many you can drive them in a low oven as well yes in a very, very low oven. yeah yeah um, yes, you can dry in a low oven. Yes, uh, I keep an eye on them though. Yeah, low oven. Some apple slices a few weeks ago, and I forgot all about them. And it was eleven o'clock at night, and I was in bed, and I suddenly woke up and thought, "Oh no, what's that funny burning?" Smell? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> They've been in there all day. <laughs> oh wow! So yes, if you do put them in a low oven, keep an eye on them. <laughs> Uh, Maria says, what's the best way to cut them without killing the plant? Well, just like you would prune, you need a nice sharp pair of secateurs or scissors. Cut them at a joint as well, a leaf joint or, a, you know, where the little branches come off. Um, and don't pull up the whole plant. Leave. No, no leave. Just take what you need. Yeah, take what you need. Let the plant take only a little so that the plant can carry on growing. And particularly if there's seeds or berries, leave enough for the wildlife mm. as well. Um, but yeah, have a look at pruning because that's the best way to do it because then it's a safe way of, of doing it for the plant. Uh, Jackie says, isn't neem supposed to be good for a hair? The oil. Uh, the oil. It? Yes, can be used for dandruff and skin complaints and stuff like that. It's used for the hair. They do, Morrison's actually sell a neem range of soap, okay. face wash, body gel, that kind of, um, the cleaning stuff, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, then Morrison's are very good in their world oil in the skin section. You can get quite a lot of Indian herbs and tinctures in that section. So it's worth a look. Yeah, thinking about, mm -hmm. I've seen neem oil in the Asian Yeah, they do soap as well and as a yeah. body wash. And loads of uh, suggestion to pop slows in the freezer yes i have heard that one to pop the slows in the freezer mm -hmm. if you if they haven't had, i know slows do benefit from a frost don't they um, yeah the taste and the use of them but you can pop them in the freezer if there is no frost um jackie i remember seeing i'm assuming that's rose hips in england when i was a kid uh, what plant are they from roses my lovely yep dog rose. roses yeah, all roses. Once they've flowered, their seed head turns into a rose head. Um, I remember them from my childhood because we used to break them open and use the hairy insides of them. Yeah, them down people's jumpers. Yeah, put them inside. <laughs> <of them. Yeah. laughs> um, uh, does anyone use one of those dehydrators? Yeah, I do in the winter occasionally. Um, the okay. day after coming up to Christmas and the oven's busy, I will use the dehydrator. They work just as well, I would say, sometimes better than drying out in the oven. Okay, I've not used one. Yet. But no, Sue, no. don't seem to get the seasons like we used to. No, I'm with you on that one, Sue. Mother Nature is drunk and menopausal, basically. <laughs> <laughs> the are all over the place. <laughs> Uh, right, this is a question that I'm not going to be able to answer, so I'm going to hand it over to our, um, 
other gurus. Oh, what herb would you suggest? Could I make a bay oil yeah. for a sore muscle rub? If not, yeah. what herb would you yes, suggest? Yes, you can. Yeah. Also, I have a lot of lemon balm. What can I use this for other than tea? Don't like use rose hips in a muscle rub because it would itch. <laughs> <laughs> That's my contribution to that. I'm going to let you lots of that. <laughs> yes to the bay oil and lemon balm. Well, you can use it magically, can't you? Um, look it up. Um, uh, I must have um, as a hair, if you make it as a tea, but use it as a hair wash. If you've got blonde hair, it's good for blonde hair. Is that the lemon balm? Yeah. yeah, it's also good for anxiety. If you don't want to make tea, you can use it as um in your bath for an in bulk um bath treat. You can use lemon peel and other bits and bobs that go in the bath and have a nice soak or you can make ice lollies as well i make ice lollies for the kids during the summer with them um, lemon balm leaves it's lemon balm quite uplifting isn't it yeah. it's a nice yeah, sort it's of very, just the smell of it isn't it yeah quite yeah, a good uplifting scent tea, isn't it as well so it's very uplifting mm. lemon balm is success healing anti-depression memory love and anxiety ruled yeah. by the moon and venus it is another water feminine herb <coughs> Lovely. Well, does anybody uh, make muscle rub with uh, anything other than bay? Um, I guess you could use lavender as well. Um, it's deeply relaxing, so it would be deeply relax your muscles. Uh, comfrey I tend to work with is a relaxant as well because um, it's very good for the muscles and bones, etc. So it's quite relaxing as a, mm. a muscle rub. Cool. I made some with the, the uh, green as well. Sorry, oh, now. Right. Meadow Meadows. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, that's a good one. Meadow sweet. I made a sort of that's quite good for the temples as well, for sort of headaches and things. That was uh, one I just sort of discovered. Look about it, it, didn't you? Yeah. Mm. Wasn't it on one of your um, musings? Yes, I'm not sure it was last month or month before one of them. Yeah, I'll yeah. pop that up. Uh, rosemary stalks make good kebab sticks. Oh, I like your barbecue. And if you chuck the actual rosemary sprigs on the barbecue coals, it infuses the food with the smell yeah. of the herb as well. Mm. Um, there we go. Oh, so many lovely gardening question here. Recently bought a small lavender bush <coughs> from Garden Centre. However, despite all the rain, it looks like it's died. Any ideas how to dry it? It's not purple anymore. Do I just prune it right back? Lavender oh. does not like being wet. No. Think it, it doesn't like being wet at all. It likes really free, well-drained soil. It likes sunshine. It does not like having wet feet. So too much rain will have been the problem. I must admit, I struggle with it in my garden because their soil is quite heavy clay and it just doesn't like growing in there. It, it likes a Mediterranean setting, really, like your herbs do. Mm. And a big pot. It would need a lot of space as well. Like, probably three pots in. Um, mm. I would cut it right back and, and fingers crossed that it prunes. But, yeah, they like very put lots of gravel and <coughs> so that it's very well drained. Um, yeah, I, I've not had a huge amount of success with lavender. It just doesn't like being in my garden. It's all just You've got clay soil, haven't you? Yeah, it just doesn't like it. Um, that was Tess that asked that question. Uh, Jackie, dog roses. Not just dog roses, Jackie, all, all roses. roses. Um, nearly all roses have rose hips. Doesn't matter what sort they are, so keep an eye out. I like the Chinese rose hips, the ones that look like little lanterns. Yes. You can actually eat those ones. Oh, you I saw those, yeah. Peel them open, <laughs> keep the seeds out, and you can eat them fresh. They're delicious. The kids usually get them for a snack when we're out foraging. <laughs> <laughs> they do, some of them do grow in unusual shapes, don't they? They're yeah. not all round. Uh, Sue uses a dehydrator, and so does Kay. Hmm. You do want one. That's on my wish list. <laughs> Uh, Kay make oh Kay uses lemon balm lemon balm to make a great gardener's hand cream. Oh, Lizzie yeah. makes a pillow from the dried leaves of lemon balm with oats. Nice. Mm. Oh, yeah, sweet pillow. Nice dreams. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Sue's suggesting cayenne for muscle. Sun. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. That you can be very careful how much because obviously it's it's mm. quite hot. 
quite warming. Yeah, <laughs> too much and quite make sure you wash your hands afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Jackie uses comfrey and insect bites. Cool. Yep. And Karen uses comfrey. Yeah. Cool. Lots and lots of suggestions. Oh, calendula balm. I think uh, Sue, you're on yes. calendula today, aren't you? Have my calendula balm here. What? We've got. I've ma been making that for years. We've got lots of questions here. Anything for a bruise? Oh, this is Arnica. Funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything for a bruise? My foot decided not to get out of the way of my door oh. quick enough. Oh, and it hit you in the temple. Oh, ouch. Oh. Yeah, Arnica is the go to, isn't it, really? Definitely. Anything bruise wise, Arnica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Arnica is your go to, so you need to get some Arnica cream. But actually, they gave me that after my um, C section. Oh, um, many years ago, I was given Arnica cream. Uh, and Kerry says, What are the best herbs for indoors on kitchen windowsill in the winter? Any of them. Yeah, <laughs> any of them. Yeah. Herbs love being on a kitchen windowsill. Absolutely love them. Obviously, depending on the size of your windowsill. <laughs> um, but yes, any I, maybe perhaps the more softer leave ones. Yeah, the kitchen the ones you're using yeah. cooking. Like yeah, so and and hard, hard. Hard. Yeah. Um, I've had coriander. Um, yes. Well, so I think I've had marjoram. Time doesn't like it indoors. No. Um, it is the softer leaf ones generally, yeah. isn't it? Like the basil and the oh, water. Oh, basil oh, is lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, chives work quite well on the windowsill too. Um, yeah, so the softer leaf ones um, work on the windowsill very well. Uh, right, here's a question that you ladies, I'll let you ladies deal with that one. What's the average lifespan on a balm that's homemade? Mm. About a year, I right? Yeah, like, I'd say a year. About a year, because it hasn't got... It, any water in it so it should be about a year you can you can make it last a bit longer to put it in the bottom of the fridge yeah if it's warm as well it goes a bit liquidy doesn't it so it's yeah. warm. sometimes come into the room and you just have a jar of meltedness Yes, Ooh. my coconut oil in the kitchen. <laughs> 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 how warm it is by how liquid the coconut oil jar is yeah. <laughs> Uh, suggestion from um, that was Kerry, so hopefully that's um, no. The Kerry was the herbs on the windowsill. That was Luna. <laughs> I will get there. I will get there. Lizzie's suggesting comfrey leaf in your sock for a bruised foot. Yeah, comfrey or arnica. I think it was your forehead that was bruised, wasn't it? You could <laughs> you could put comfrey leaf to your forehead. <laughs> uh, Leslie keeps rosemary on the wind ledge. Oh, it likes the heat, doesn't it? It likes the sun. Uh, Jackie, are you going to talk about how to make a balm? Balm. Yes, I can. I, I think, have. Sue, that we've had enough pointers now. You might have to start us off. I did write some notes. My notes are on calendula or pot marigold. Um, it's antiseptic and antifungal. I make an ointment by first making an infused oil. So fill the jar up with whatever leaves or you know plant matter you're using. Um, pour over your oil of cho choice. With calendula, I usually use sunflower oil because it's a sun herb. Um, leave it on a sunny windowsill. Shake it every day for four weeks and then strain it out. And then, hang on, what did I write? Right, <laughs> for four weeks, then strain it in the jug. Then I place the oil in a Pyrex bowl over a small saucepan of simmering water, add the beeswax, and once the beeswax has melted, then you pour it into a sterilised jar, pop a lid on and lay it. Mm -hmm. and that's it. But I can put a proper, I haven't gone into amount, actually, but I can put up a recipe. Yeah, we'll put people one on the want top. it. Yeah, we'll the put it for the amount. Kitchen Witch blog, and we'll. we'll do I think it's blog. usually about twenty grams of beeswax to two hundred oil, but I'll have to double check that. 
Can you use something other than beeswax? Could you replace it with soil? Well, obviously, you know, I'm vegan now. <laughs> and That's why I, um, <laughs> I, I did buy some brown rice wax, but it oh. was gritty. I didn't even know. I was, was talking thing. to you, Heather, weren't you? And you were well, you I forgot to get back to me on that one. I didn't. Smack. Yeah. yeah um, I'm thinking like we were thinking me. I'm just change. going. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> Coconut butter. About, and I Coconut noticed butter. I've got a new dress on she's just bought. Anyway. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think um, beeswax is what tends to be in most of them, isn't it? But it is if you are vegan. <laughs> you 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 are, can't yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone's suggesting shea, shea oil. Yeah, you'd need the solid butter because it's got to yeah. be so solid. Right. Mm -hmm. How would coconut oil work? Sorry? Would coconut oil work? Yeah, but it melts very easily, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm... Oh, I'm, 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 oh uh, one kind of... Yes, no, oh. I need to get a pen and paper and write that down. Hold on. <laughs> we learn things as we go along. This is what sharing is all about. You're never, you're never, never old enough or experienced enough not to learn stuff. I no, have, yes. Heather's told me the name Sue asked me to message her and I completely forgot. Yeah, I know. Is it from a plant? A -U yeah. Is that a B? Yeah. C A R N A U B A. 100% yeah. pure and natural. Is extracted from the leaves of the Brazilian palm tree. Knowing oh. as Copernica Sephira, yeah. also referred to as the tree of life. Yeah. Oh, oh, there you go. Synchronicity. We love a bit of synchronicity. Is it wax? Does it say and cocoa butter? Wax, does it say? The beeswax I know is traditional, but if you are vegan, you can't use beeswax. So no. um, I've I've made um I mean I make it for my mum as well and her friend who's 89 and who uses it for anything on her skin um and everything really um but that's calendula you use that's calendula ointment which is the pot marigold very useful what do you and he's use what you use it for no. um what, what magic oh what do i use it for i use it for, um on my feet to be honest my feet are really soft when i go to reflexology appointments they always say my feet are like babies <laughs> it's very good with dry cracked um skin oh, okay but it's also it can go on it, it can be used for bruises um minor wounds yeah minor burns although i usually use aloe vera for that um I thought, I, yeah, anything. It can be used for rashes, any sort of sore skin. Yeah, it's very soothing. Um, and it's antiseptic and antifungal. So, yeah. Sue says, I presume these waxes have no nasty stuff in them. No, they're just no, pure, no natural. Just mm. pure, completely natural. Yeah, pure mm. beeswax. No, no, no petroleum jelly no. stuff. No. Um, but yeah, I, I'm worried about. I'm always worried about making a bomb, but you make it sound. So yes, easy. I will, Maria. It is straightforward. Yeah, well, uh, there will. Uh, Sue will put the recipe up on the. Kitchen. But you can use any any of your plant. You know your herbs. You can use for that recipe. I'll just put the like the amounts up for you, and well, I'll write down what I do. And most of the. Plants are adaptable to make into a balm. Yeah. yeah, it's very strange, isn't it? Balm. I mean, you can use some essential oils in it to make it scented. Uh, with my allergies, I tend not to. Cool. So, Heather, yes. do you want to? Um, what herb have you got? Thyme. Thyme. Go Time. for it. <laughs> so, um, the reason I chose it is because at this time of the year, I'm always thinking about coughs, colds, sore throats. Mm. Um, so for me, time just sung out that to be talked about because it's antifungal, antiviral. Um, you can use it on skin. You can use it in the bath. You can make a tea from it. Um, my favourite way, if I've got a slightly sore throat or I've got a bit of a cough, is just to, if I've got some dried in the cupboard, I'll just take a teaspoon into a teapot pour boiling water on it and have that three times a day um with some honey because it does taste a bit 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got to have a little bit of honey. In it. Um, but again, honey is good for sore throats. So, so yeah, that's one of my favourite ways. Um, in baths, I put it in those little favour bags. You know those little gauzy things, um, and that either fresh from the garden or dried with some marjoram, which I think Ness is going to be talking about. Um, and I discovered that because it's good for arthritis. Okay. So with a handful of Epsom salts and one of those bags hanging over the tap, um, and then I just lie there and relax, and it actually really helps my joints. Cool. Um, yeah. the, the essential oil, you can you can get thyme essential oil, and that's what I tend to use if I'm making any balms or anything, rather than... I, do, I have a very mixed record with making my own oils. <laughs> <laughs> some of them come out really well. And some of them <laughs> get very moldy. Uh, thyme is one of the ones that I have. Tr I've tried both the fresh and the dried. Um, I've tried it making it like Sue does, um, sitting on a windowsill um, or in the airing cupboard. Because I thought perhaps it's the sun, so I'll try it in a dark place, warm dark place. I've also tried it in a slow cooker, which I think gypsy uses yes. for a lot of hers. Um, time will go moldy for me if i try and make my own oil don't know well, why i have to try it now yeah, yeah. Some, some reason time and i so i tend to use the essential oil as well mm. but yeah so I'd, I'd use the essential oil in skincare because it's it's anti-aging it's um helps to prevent wink didn't work but, yes, um, yes. but yeah, it's to be good for um, if you have freckles or spots. It's very good for acne um, as well. So yeah, so time very versatile. And I have Rachel's book handy. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> in case anybody wants to get it that hasn't already got it, um, because in here it has the list. Because I ca um, I can't remember everything. Oh, no. Well, time, so it's magic. Magical properties are healing, health, peace. Psychic powers, love, purification, courage, releasing, sleep, beauty. Um, I think was it the Egyptians that used to use time as one of their embalming oh, herbs? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and the Sumerians used it, or was the, the Greeks, or was it both? Could have been both. Used it in their temples, um, in incense as purification. So ideal spring time or at this time of the year when you're wanting to cleanse to get the energies ready for the next season the, the ideal isn't in an incense blend not quite sure how strong it would be i use time in my smudge sticks quite often yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Mm. yeah. so yeah so ruling planet again venus mm. Um, I'm like Jamaican beef patties, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> I made a batch this week and they were delicious. <laughs> yeah, again, ruling planet Venus element is again water and it's a feminine energy. Mm. And it's strange how we've picked feminine. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We will put all these recipes up on the blog. Uh, there is a question here. Uh, you don't have to make them solid, though, do you? You can use them right. as an oil as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can. Uh, yeah, to make your own. Um, oil. Oils. I just have to do a bit of a legal disclaimer thing. Um, if you are making or using essential oils, please don't put them straight on your skin. Yeah, make sure. Um, some oil. essential oils are quite dangerous Trust to the skin. Them. They can cause reactions. They can cause irritation. Uh, and also, with any tinctures or herbal teas or herbal remedies. Please, please, please do check if you have underlying health conditions or if you're taking uh, over-the-counter medication, please check first because herbs, medicinal herbs, are very, very powerful. A lot of their traditional herbs were where the over-the-counter medicines came from. Um, some of them are very powerful and they can interact with your medication you're already taking or they can interact with health conditions so please please be really careful and check first before you start scoffing them <laughs> that's why the, with the time tea it's only three times a day yeah so it's just three you don't drink it all day like i would normal tea yeah because yeah. no, yeah some of them are really powerful and can cause problems can't they um 
Sylvie has asthma and is feel I get a flare up. I use turmeric in my coffee. Two days later, it's settled down. Turmeric is quite a good cure. Yeah, really yeah. good yeah. stuff for taking. Um, mm. It's very nice in a latte as well. I've had very nice turmeric lattes. Um, and like golden milk made with turmeric. Golden milk being. Oh, I love golden beer. milk. I drink that every night. Taste made from turmeric, spring water, and black pepper. It's Jack very, very good for you. <laughs> Uh, there, there's two of them. I'm going to be really, you know, advert here. There's a good <laughs> one as well because yeah. of course, things like turmeric are food. Lots and lots of food ingredients are magical mm. as well. Uh, Jess loves thyme; it's her favourite. Do you have? Oh, that's an interesting one. Any herb ideas to help with blushing? Usually happens when I'm oh, oh, or sage are very good for blushing because they're very calming. What was that it's one? Calming. Calming. Vervain oats or oh, sage. Right. I would go. I would do something to treat the anxiety. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, chamomile or very, something calming. Aren't they? Oats are very soothing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that. Uh, yeah, you need to treat the source for that one. Rosacea. Yeah, my little sister stuff is really bad with that. She gets it all like, all on her cheeks. It starts on her chest, and just she literally looks like she's having a hot flush. Yeah. But, um, yeah, oats and sage or vervain. Very good. But yeah, that helps. And yes, I would look at the source of that as well. Um, yes, Jackie points out you have to be careful if you're pregnant. If you're pregnant, oh, I would be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. Heather's a midwifey lady here. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah, I mean, ba basically, if you're pregnant, no. don't. 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 Take it. No. Don't. <laughs> no. Just don't. don't. No. <laughs> I mean, in food, it, herbs in food, fine. Yeah. But certainly not not on your skin because your skin your skin is your biggest organ and actually yeah. will absorb these things that will go into your system and will go through to the baby and yeah. breastfeeding. Yeah. It will still go through in the breast milk. Um so yeah, basically just don't use something very plain, just normal any oil. Yeah. Not an infused oil. I have a long story about that. <laughs> <laughs> Do yeah. not use any infused oil, especially chili oil. To no, oil. oil. Yeah. <laughs> Never put chili oil anywhere near your body. <laughs> you make sure you wash your hands. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, if you're pregnant, Eve, don't just avoid them. Just chili them. oil, even then, I've cut chilies up and I've washed up because I wash. I don't have a dishwasher. I'm the dishwasher. Yeah. Or Bobby's, <laughs> but I've washed up and I've gone. The whole evening, and I've taken my contact lenses out at night, and Ooh, that is yeah. hours. And I've washed my hands, and it's potent stuff, isn't it, Chili? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, Let's made a comment about the turmeric, which is quite interesting. Uh, she'd love to take turmeric, but it doesn't like her. Tried the capsules, and it just really overheated my body internally. Oh, I think that cool. is a good example of. Everyone's body is different. Mm -hmm. Everyone's system is different. Mm -hmm. So just because it works for one person, it's not going to work for another. So no. do be very careful with them because they are powerful ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You can see a professional um, medical herbalist. Yes, for anything, really. Yeah. Um, th oh, thank you, Heather. Mm -hmm. uh, next, have you got marjoram, I believe, is it? I have. Um, I had a small pot of something grown in my garden i didn't know what it was so i put it into the ground and this is just tiny <laughs> tiny piece of it it's actually loves my ground has gone absolutely mental out there um so i do need to so i had a look at it didn't know what it was until i got the old plant net app out and it was a toss-up between marjoram and oregano which they're very very similar yeah um, but looking at the, the leaf shape and everything else, it is marjoram. Um, obviously, I've, I've only sort of really just discovered it, but I've had a good look at the properties. It is anti-inflammatory, and there's another word which I didn't know. It's antimicrobial, which means it, it's anti nice. sort of any microbes it would stop, you know, sort of them multiplying. Yeah. So I thought it would, I mean, it's, it's really good for digestive issues and painful painful menstruation. Digestive issues, I thought with a tea, would be quite nice as a calm, you know, 
tummy calming tea. Um, it can also be used for coughs, um, gallbladder issues, migraines and dizziness. I quite like, sort of like when you said migraines, not to take it, but to balm with it. I thought it'd be quite nice as a mm. you know, temple rub. So that's and the dizziness. I don't know whether that's um, whether that could be used with a balm as well. I'm I'm not sure. I sort of again I'm sort of drawn to the tea, um, but also use it in baths as well. I think that might be quite calming and a nice warm bath. Um, it's got quite a few magical properties as well. Um, it's protect protective. I seem to have a lot of protection plants and herbs growing pretty much in my garden. So it's not surprising that's another one. Um, I'm trying to read the blog now. <laughs> it's also very good in pasta sauce. <laughs> Is it? That sounds, yeah. Yeah. Smart I mean, obviously it's used a lot, isn't it, in culinary and salads. They've said sort of can be used on salads and things. Um, but I've not tried it in pasta sauce. That sounds quite, quite you nice. You can use it as you would uh, uh, oregano, oregano. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. A combination of them actually works well. Mm, nice. Yes. Mm. I say, so I'm going to sort of give it, you know, I need to, it has gone quite overgrown now. So I'm, that's just a small bit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to sort of chop. So if anybody wants any, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> so I'm going to have tons and tons of it. Um, yes, it's also quite good for. Apparently, it's supposed to protect you against witches, spells, and spirits. <laughs> Ooh, see, so then yeah, it didn't work. Then, did it? <laughs> it would work very well um, in anti in anti hex, wouldn't it? In anti hex spells. Yes. Mm. Yeah. It can also be used. Um, to connect with spirit or communicate with a departed loved one. But it is also used as a posy in hand fasting rites as well, which was interesting to read. Um, but yes, I think with what I would do with it, let's say tea, sachets, bath, spells, any, anything. I think like with any herb really, you can just mix it up and put it yeah. with anything. So it's quite, quite, yeah, quite a good little herb. Been no, again, you can use anything of it. Yeah, incense. It has got, I mean, I don't know if it's just gone like that, but it has got um, quite a woody mm -hmm. stem on it. As they so get I older, think, they do, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, I think it has just gone, rather that it did start off nice and, I mean, it's got lovely energy, a nice sort of soft energy to it. But I think where I've just let it grow, it's gone it's a bit woody. Quite, quite woody and quite wild. Lizzie but. has suggested to wash your hands in alcohol if the chilli oil is still on your hands. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. And then drink it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it sounds... Just as, uh, just as Gypsy's sipping her tea. <laughs> Have you got herb for us, Dipsy? <laughs> um, I chose lavender because there was so much you can do with it. Um, you could make an infused oil, you could make a balm, you can drop it into a clean sock and wrap it around the bath for a nice infused bath. Um, you can use it in spells, incense, dream pillows, cooking, um, lavender lemonade. If um, you suffer with stress and anxiety, headaches, that's really nice for that. Um, it's a pretty much do anything with herb and it's one that most people have access to so um mm -hmm. well, i chose lavender um it's sort of go-to for relaxing isn't it yeah mm -hmm. yeah most people are okay with lavender although i do know one person who is um allergic to lavender and she can't oh. have anything at all with it in so she has to be very careful with like bedtime products and sleepy kind of um, balms and stuff that help you sleep because the majority of them have lavender in and she can't have it. Mm. That must be quite, that's quite unusual, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's the, she's the first person that I've known that mm. has an aversion to lavender. Usually it's, as I say, a go-to for everybody. But um, you can cook with it. You can use it in spells or poppets or dream pillows mm. or tea. It's a happy it's flower, isn't it? A happy kind of... Happy peace 
love and peace kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a balance and calming Herbert, I would say as well. It kind of brings you back to um, base, your base setting, as it were. If you're stressed or anxious, it kind of calms you and brings you back down. If you're, you know, just had a heavy workout, it could, uh, a nice oil you could use as a muscle relaxant afterwards. Yeah, I don't and have oil. Oil is lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lavender <laughs> lemonade is very delicious, though. It doesn't, um, the colour of the lemonade isn't lavender in any way, shape, or form. It's a yeah. lemonade colour, but um, it has the, the softest um, lavender flavour to it. And um, I like lavender mead as well, actually. My husband is making it for me, so I might have to drop some lavender in it. Jackie says la lavender and chamomile tea. That is that was an idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, everybody we likes all the recipes. We will post all the recipes for you afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, most people are all right with lavender. But actually, somewhere has we've got a comment here that. Uh, Lizzie, I've known two women who hate the smell of lavender, which I found strange. Mm. I've got to be honest, it's not strange. my favourite smell. I love it. It isn't my favourite smell. I think it just makes me, <laughs> makes me think of old ladies. Old ladies. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Me, yeah. Say that. <laughs> no, it's not my favourite smell. I have had nice lavender cookies. They were very nice. Oh, yeah. 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 Lavender, lavender scones are delicious. Oh, yeah. See, mm. I like eating it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah. Oh, I'd have to try that one. Yeah, I don't really like the smell of lavender. No, it's not mine. Once. Oh, oh, I like the sound of that lavender ice cream. Yeah, mm, sounds nice. Yeah, I can do oh. that. That's an yeah. I guess that would be similar to coffee, wouldn't it? The Indian ice cream, like the mango coffee, you can get yeah. very similar to that. Oh. I love coffee ice cream. Mm, me too. <laughs> I love Indian food, so. Me too. Oh, yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> two curries in a week <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I could, I'm sure I could have curry every day actually oh definitely but mm. oh, no, we've covered herbs today but it also covers spices I use a lot of the Indian yeah. spices in my magic uh, cardamom and clove mm -hmm. ginger, cinnamon they're all my go to spices because mm. you can use them just as you would uh, with any of the herbs as well. Yeah. Um, Maybe we could do that for the next one. Spices. <laughs> magical spices. Mm, yeah, yeah, magical uh, spices. Good, yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a recipe on in the in to internet for uh, <laughs> ice cream somewhere. Um, but yes, all the other ones, the balms, and the, there's a request for the lavender lemonade recipe as well. We will put them all on the yeah, book. Yeah, sure. I will have it for just, it. If you want more information about any particular herb, the Kitchen Witch blog has quite a lot of them covered. We have yeah. quite a lot of the herbs. And my own personal blog has quite a lot of um, magical ingredients and plants on there as well. So between the two blogs, we have got quite a lot of them covered. Uh, Sylvie has tried violet ice cream. Oh, no, I oh, haven't heard yeah. of that one. I know you can eat the violet flowers. I've had them in salads, but I haven't had them in an ice cream before. I didn't realise you had them too. They? There's a lot of edible flowers. Yeah, it was on the forage, one of the foraging sites that I'm on. A lady posted a post on there yesterday saying, who knew that you could eat them? And the, the little berries that grow inside them taste like red grapes. Oh, yeah, so fuchsia, fuchsia, you know the, the fuchsia yeah. berries that you yeah. get when a fuchsia, yeah, you can eat those. They're yeah, like grapes right. as well. Yeah. Grapes. yeah, I didn't realise the flower and the berry were edible. Mm -hmm. So I did out for some of them. There is a lot of <laughs> edible flowers. Uh, I think in my garden magic book, there's a list of edible flowers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of them are quite surprising. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously, please, please identify them properly first. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are some things that look like something and they're not they're imposters so <laughs> mm. um we've got a question about the golden milk now the golden milk is it is lovely um oh i love it yeah is it that that's an indian one as well isn't it, that, it is, yeah it's yeah. reducing inflammation and it prevents cell damage it improves your mood supports your brain function and memory prevents heart disease reduce possibly reduces the risk of cancer 
It's good for lowering, lowering blood sugar and boosting the immune system. That's what I generally use it for is the immune system. That's boost. a turmeric, mm. isn't it? I mean, you yeah. can have it in any way. Yeah. It doesn't have it. It's inflammatory as well. So, yeah. For yeah. It has a bit of black pepper in it as well, doesn't it? So it's got yeah, the black pepper in it is good. Um, and a bit of honey because you've got to have it sweet. <laughs> but it is very nice. And you don't have to have it with normal milk. It goes really well with... Um, soya oat or coconut milk yeah well. i don't drink normal milk so i would make it with oat milk yeah oat milk's lovely mm. oh, i don't drink normal milk That's we are. Mm. yeah it makes it nice nice lovely um i've discovered the almond barista milk the what where almond barista milk oh yeah yeah that is just <laughs> ooh. making coffee <laughs> <coffee. laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay no. Yeah, yeah, you I shake, you shake it, it, and it comes. It looks like it looks like a cappuccino. Oh, I haven't seen that. Or yeah, yeah. yeah oh. it's actually called almond barista. Yeah, they do yeah. like the one as well. Mm. I, I have almond milk and I have soy milk, but I've not seen that one. Brilliant. Look out for that one. Yeah. Mm. So there are a lot of uses from magical poppets spells rolling candles in her pouches all witch bottles all sorts of things right through to herbal teas and um, balms and tinctures and and dream pillows I, I mean their herbs are added like you say morrison's have got the neem range a lot of the supermarkets yeah. have switched on to it now too don't they and they are making yeah. beauty products and shampoos and conditioners all with natural herbs in because they're brilliant to use um Jackie's just put something interesting. She yeah. said golden milk has its roots in Ayurveda. 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 Yes. Ayurveda, which is a 3,000-year-old Indian wellness and healing system. Yeah, it's all about balancing the body and working so it's a cold. Very, very odd. I've heard of that, but I wasn't sure how to pronounce it. <laughs> Ayurveda massage before. Um, yeah, it is. And it's a fascinating mm. To work with, and it does, um, it works with the type of person you are, isn't it? And then it, it mm -hmm. makes all the different, um, you're welcome, Tess. Spices and things. Uh, where do you buy golden milk? Uh, oh, well, I make it, you make yeah, it. It. yeah make it. it's really super okay. simple to make. Um, we'll get a recipe for that, instructions for that popped up as well. Um, oh, Lani's lost everyone, the video stopped. Oh. Oh, it's still playing on the page. Yeah, I still still got so there. Maybe it's the connection, Yanni. Page. Um, let me type that. Uh, refresh your page. So, if anybody's got any um, other questions about herbs or things, or anything that you want to ask us in particular about witchcraft, uh, or any of us in particular, um, please do pop them in the comments. We're almost at it. Well, actually, we've gone over a time, but I'm probably <laughs> keeping time because <laughs> we've had lots of lovely questions today. So it's been brilliant to be able to interact. And I've learned things today as well. So uh, hopefully you guys have as well. But yeah, don't definitely. count anything, any of the weeds on the pavement, in the garden. Um, PlantNet is a really good um, app. If you're not sure, yes, aren't net, large net for identifying yeah, I use that. Net. Um, but don't you know if you don't have a garden, if you're not in an area where you can forage, don't discount um, the supermarkets. If you can find an Asian supermarket, oh, even better, fantastic. Mm. The amount of amazing stuff that you can find in there and buy it for very, very cheap prices is brilliant. But if all you can use is supermarket mm. herbs, then then do it. Um, you know, you've got to use whatever you can get hold of and what suits your budget as well. Um, we have a oh, here we are. Oh, question. Uh, someone gave me two pruned branches of bay leaf which are hung to dry. They've turned an ugly brown, no green, and very brittle. Are they still available? Yeah. 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 Still use them. Yeah. They do fade. The colour fades when you dry them, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. On any of the plant, any of the herbs. I think particularly if um, if they've not been dried properly or if they've been dried in the sun, the sun yeah, fades them. It doesn't any hurt. It fades them completely. Um, but yes, I probably wouldn't cook with them. 
but no. I used them in ma for magical use yesterday. Great right. um, subject. But yeah, I think it does depend on how you dry them and where you keep them. But yes, yeah, still use them for magic. Never throw anything away. I don't throw anything away. Even stuff in the kitchen that's gone out of date. Well, obviously, you know, not fresh vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> but any of the dried herbs and spices, they lose their taste, uh, particularly with the spices. They'll lose their flavour. They'll lose the power or the intensity of the flavour. But they don't really go off but you can still use them for magic with no detriment to the power at all. So, you know, I've got nut, jar of nutmegs, which I think they went out of date about four years ago. <laughs> but I use them in magical workings and they're absolutely fine. Don't, we can just, we don't waste anything. <laughs> oh, we have teasel. Are these, they're fascinating teasels, aren't they? Oh. used like a comfrey. It's good for inflammation in it works for bone you could use it in a, a country bar like a country farm for sore bones or when you've broken i would more. definitely try it and store it they look nice anyway don't they they're quite unusual. That's it. you can actually dry them whole and use them yeah. as decorations over yeah. the winter period yeah um, yep yeah. uh, or back scratches or <laughs> apparently it's very good for treating the symptoms of lyme disease as well Oh, okay. Oh, cool. interesting. Everything yeah. has a use. Everything mm. has a use. Yes, do. Because the, and I yeah. think if it's grown in your garden and you've actually thought about drying it and storing it, then it's a use will come up for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trust your intuition because if it's grown there and you're thinking about it, do it because you'll find next month, next week, that something will come up and the teaser will be perfect for it. So, um yeah, definitely do it. Definitely do it. Um, so, uh, fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We do have some more. Th there, Sue's granddad was a tailor and he used teasels to brush the clothes. Yes. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. picks up all the, the fluff and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you stick little googly eyes on them, they look like hedgehogs. <laughs> <laughs> we have some other things coming up. If you are a student of Kitchen Witch, we have. The lovely Gypsy doing student Reiki, uh, Sunday the 13th of September, 7pm in the student-only chat room. Yep. For everybody, open to everybody, we've got an autumn equinox ritual online, live, Sunday the 20th of September at 7pm. Uh, here in this group, where you are now, open to everyone, do come and join us. There is an event on the Facebook page if you want to have a look at what you need for the spell if you want to work the spell along with us which magically appeared um we also are trying a zoom student zoom meeting for students of kitchen it's sunday 27th of september at 4 p.m in the student only group that'll be interesting <laughs> us trying to work zoom will be great fun um thank you the link for the autumn equinox event has just come up in the comments from the elf behind the scenes <laughs> Uh, Jackie found it very interesting, made lots of notes. Thank you. We will oh, put these, all of these bits and pieces will go up on the Kitchen Witch blog, all the balms and the, the lavender lemonade recipes and things. So do have a look at the Kitchen Witch blog because it's got lots of herb information and plant information and mushroom information and all sorts of things on there. Uh, so do have a look. Uh, the link to the Kitchen Witch main page is there. Click the blog from there. Um, thank you, as always, for joining us. We will do another Waffling Witches in the very near future. If you have questions about things otherwise, do post them in the Kitchen Witch Facebook group and everyone will jump in <laughs> with their thoughts and their opinions. <laughs> but, for, you know, that's what we're about, really. Sharing is the way that you learn. So, and I say, I've learned something today as well. So, um, <laughs> Leslie says thank you to the elf, Peter. <laughs> uh, but check out the blogs as well keep uh posting in the kitchen witch group with any questions uh if you want us to talk about any subject in particular then please do pop us a, a line or a suggestion i'm doing my friday morning lives every friday morning on my author facebook page 9 a.m uk time every week Moonbooks has chats from different authors at 7pm UK time every Wednesday over on their Facebook page. 
Uh, Gypsy does regular live Reiki sessions on her own uh, Reiki Facebook page as well. Yep, I'm back from free, a month ago. All free, all open to everyone. Do come along and join us. Um, and thank you. Thank you to the ladies here without whose support kitchen which wouldn't actually run it would be a complete nightmare <laughs> and thank you to all you lovely people for joining us and for all of your questions it's been absolutely fascinating to hear your questions today thank you so much um and have a good oh there's the link for bernie's facebook oh well, thank you Jackie, it's just above your comment there the link to gypsy's reiki facebook page do pop along there and join it she does regular live reiki sessions Oh, which are fantastic so thank you thank you to everyone have a fantastic rest of your sunday and we will see you very very soon Bye. 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 Bye.